Nintendo distributor application was this was my declaration of independence. And it certainly has been that. So just imagine a life where you are totally free. You have time freedom, you have health freedom, you have an abundance of energy, you have an abundance of friends and you have a mission which serves the world. Uh, I think that's the life that a lot of us strive for. And if that's you, then I'm gonna share some strategies that I have found to be really, really helpful. And one of my strategies is to be a voracious reader. You know, I recall talking to a mentor of mine way back when, he says, Bob, if you wanna succeed in life, you have to have an edge. You have to know more. You have to seek information, uh, not just seek it, but find it, validate it, apply it, put it to the test. Uh, and then learn, right? Add a little bit, put your own spin on it. Uh, I like Bruce Lee, uh, even though he passed a number of years ago, his, his legend and his wisdom lives on. He said, you know what? Study everything. Use what works and add what is uniquely your own. And then you get your own special blend on it. So Matt Morris wrote this book, Seven Secrets to Seven Figures. Now, I think the title violates what some people might call cheesy, uh, but we're already part of this business. So we'll share what he did and what he thought was successful to make seven figures in multiple companies, which I will say I think is a fantastic feat. By the way, I have applied consistently with Matt Teaches. I love his spin on it. So I'm going to share my summary of his book. So what are his seven secrets? Well, I don't know that any of them are secrets. Number one, find your big why, right? If you have a big reason, you'll go forward. Uh, little reasons, they're, they're not very motivating. Uh, next, he wants you to become an expert. We'll talk about how you can do that and what the consensus is. Uh, and then do the doable DMO, right? Your daily method of operation. It's got to be doable for you. And I hope what I present is doable for everybody, but scalable, right? So if you want to be successful super fast, do it multiple times a day, but at least do it daily. Uh, he then talks about number four. He says massive action. But if you have hunger and skills, I think that translates to massive action. Hunger, especially. We'll talk about why that's really powerful. Number five, instead of trying to find a leader, you be the leader that you would follow. Finally, uh, expand your vision and take extreme ownership of your business and your life. So this is associated or attributed to anonymous, right? That person that said so many smart things, but if you have a big enough why, you'll figure out the how or the hows take care of themselves. So I'm gonna take a little, little deviation here. I've been taking a, a speaking course and uh, by Pete Vargas and, and he talks about first connecting with your story, with your heart. And I think there's a part of this story that maybe a bunch of you haven't heard yet but I'm gonna turn back the clock to 2014. Uh, this was my beautiful family in 2014. And by the way, they're, they're all wonderful and beyond that now. Uh, Jacob actually is the one that introduced me to this business. He's buried, married to my beautiful daughter-in-law, Megan, and they created a, a beautiful baby, little baby Lily, uh, that uh, Kelly and I, guess what, have our first grandbaby. There's my daughter, Christy. She's also married with baby on the way in August. My amazing and beautiful daughter, Alexis, a degree in psychology from Texas State, real estate entrepreneur, fantastic young lady with a beautiful heart. Uh, so my, that was my family back then. By the way, they're all still growing and thriving. I had an A-list practice. I had treated world-class athletes from nearly every professional sport. In fact, I think every professional sport. I had treated celebrities. I had phenomenal success with them. Uh, as well as the other end of the spectrum, I had also taught over 10,000 hours of continuing education seminars to doctors all over the world. So, you know, in 2014, I was absolutely on top of the world. And then life threw me a mini curveball, right? Uh, suddenly, you know, imagine that, you know, you're, you're on a dream vacation, you're just in the waves, you're enjoying a beautiful life. And suddenly a big threat literally just shows up from out of nowhere. Well, that's kind of what happened to me. You know, I, I happen to have a, a history of shoulder problems. And so I went in and I had a, an x-ray taken. And 
you can see my name. Now you know my, my birthday, right? And it says my x-ray, my shoulder. And I'm gonna blow up this in just a moment, but anytime you see something called cystic lesion, something's eating holes in the bone, and it was lesions with an S, and it says MRI or bone scan recommended, uh, that gets your attention. So literally, I received this x-ray report just when I was leaving town on a speaking trip. And uh, that was the last thing I looked at before I, I left my office. And I, I was really quite shaken. I put my, my x-ray report down on my desk. Well, I got a minute later, for, call a minute later from my wife. And, and she said, Bob, what did your x-ray report say? Uh, and I said, mm, not much. Why? She says, well, don't tell me not much. She said, you know, Dr. Tanay is up here crying so hard she can't even answer my questions. What did the report say? And I said, well, Kelly, I don't know. You know, and she says, well, is it bad? I said, mm, it could be. I don't think so, but it could be. And she said, well, what does it say? I said, look, I don't know. I need to get an MRI, right? Let me, let me just go out of town and, and do what I need to do. Well, the great news is I didn't have metastatic cancer. That's what that x-ray report looked like. Uh, thank God, it was actually just artifact from some shoulder surgeries that I had had, but that was enough to really, really scare me. So my time out of town, I was sitting there thinking, well, what if I only have six months to live, right? None of my kids are, are chiropractors, functional medicine practitioners, so my practice isn't going to be worth much to my family. Uh, they can't take on my, my role as a speaker, so that's not going to be worth much, so what am I going to do? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I, I built the organo business, and that was what really launched me into massive action. I was motivated. I had a big why, and I built a diamond, and Kelly and I actually built uh, then ultimately a blue diamond organization. But I love Tony Robbins. You know, I, I, I go in waves of, of speakers that I like, and on, on this uh, recent pandemic issue, I really like his stance, so I've been listening to him almost daily. But he says, you know, in life, you need either inspiration or desperation. Inspiration can be wonderful, uh, but reality is some people are just, most people are, are inspired for a very short period of time. Uh, and, and so if you're truly inspired, if you're in spirit, that should last you a lifetime. Uh, but I think what some people think is inspiration is just temporary motivation. And I love Zig Ziglar. I listened to him years ago. Uh, he said, you know, people basically fuss that motivation doesn't last, but his reply is, neither does bathing. And that's why I recommend both daily. And, and so you do want to find ways to get motivated every single day. And I think if you have that why and you wake up to it, right, you don't have to necessarily wake up, you have to wake up to it in, in your bed, but maybe as you go brush your teeth, look at a picture of your why on your mirror. Understand why you're showing up every day and striving to get better. Now there's also desperation and, and we've seen plenty of the best stories in all of network marketing were people that really seem to have their back against the wall. So, um, you know, I, I, it could be any person in any form, but what's the advantage of our business? Very low point of entry. In fact, people can get in with no money. You might say, oh, come on, Bob, no money? Well, Jim Rohn said you can buy and then sell, or you can sell and then buy. And I have seen people pre-sell a gold pack. You know, we'll talk about how to make an invitation and, uh, and other things like that, but you can pre-sell coffee with no money. You can pre-sell skincare. You can pre-sell travel. You can do all of that in this business. If you have a big enough why, the hows will take care of uh, themselves. But now here's one of the concepts I really enjoy, and that is the concept of little wins. And so if you're, if you're not very inspired, guess what, a little win every day can be progress, can keep you going. Uh, I live in a golf course community and I was watching people on the golf course today. And you know, I, I promise you that the average golfer doesn't break 100, but why do they keep coming back? They get a little win, maybe one or two shots every 18 holes, maybe hit, they hit that great drive or a great chip or, or they sink a long putt. It doesn't take many. Think about it. They're, they're, they're taking 100 strokes and just one or two of them is great. That's not a big hit rate, but it's enough to keep them coming back because it's exciting. So I, I would really like people to address you know, network marketing like golf. Hey, get a little win, be consistent, play, 
and really celebrate those victories. Eric Worre, I think, is the best trainer in the game, and he talks about this concept of getting people over the line. And I've heard him share this statistic many, many times. He says, look, if your new distribution partners earn even a dollar in their first 30 days, the problem or, or the probability of them being in the business six months later is about 80%. If they do not earn a dollar in their first 30 days, that probability drops down to 20%. So I want you to think about that for a moment. Can you lead a new distribution partner to earn a dollar? I promise you, you can, you know, make some type of incentive, but literally how about have them message their friends and say, John, I started a new business. I want you to be my first customer. It'll cost you $2 to be my first customer. Would you do that for me? You know, how many people do you think would say yes? Uh, I, I promise you, if you send it to 10, if you don't get someone that says yes, we need to reevaluate a lot of things. And then you really, really need this business, right? You need the community, you need the training, but imagine 10 friends. John, I want you to be my first customer. Sally, I want you to be your first, my first customer. It'd be $2, it'd be $3, it'd be $5. Come up with whatever, right? Um, heck, you might even just tell them $5, right? And then if they want black, well, give them three. If they want latte, give them two. If they want mocha, give them one, you know, however that works. But earn your profit, earn that the very first day. Um, I've heard it called the gift of desperation. Well, what do you do when you're desperate? Well, most people will do whatever it takes. So I happen to love this story, right? So here we have this rabbit and here we have this cheetah. Well, who's gonna win, right? The fastest land animal, it can get to, to bursts of 80 miles per hour, it can turn on a dime. Uh, it is beyond amazing. And then this little rabbit. But I'll tell you what, the rabbit gets away. So imagine this rabbit getting away and, and the friends are saying, hey, my, my gosh, that was amazing. You got away from the fastest animal in the world. How did you do that? Well, the answer can be actually very, very simple. He was running for his lunch. I was running for my life. I had a big why. So what if you were running for your life in this business? Would you waste your context? Would you waste your effort? Or would you reach out to your leadership and, and say, you know, uh, my, this is very, very important to me. Literally, my family's wellness uh, depends on it. Uh, can you give me some guidance here, right? And then obviously, if someone is experienced and has built a business, they can give you some good advice. But let me share with you, you come from the heart, you, you make a connection, you offer value. Uh, and then you ultimately find a way to move forward in the business, but seek guidance. Eric Thomas is a gentleman that I listened to in, in alive for the first time in uh, December. And his story was one of the most powerful stories that I've ever heard. He was homeless. Uh, and now he's touted as the number one motivational speaker in the world. Well, how did he do it? day by day, step by step, mentor by mentor, concept by concept, principle by principle, adding value, adding value, adding value. He went from a high school dropout ultimately to a PhD. So he is officially Dr. Eric Thomas. Well, how did he do it? He had a big enough why. Love was actually behind his mission. Uh, and you need to find someone or something and hopefully yourself that you love enough to put in that kind of effort to create your life story. Not everybody wants to be a millionaire, uh, but you probably wanna be comfortable and you probably wanna be healthy and you probably wanna have good relationships. And this business promises all of that for those that plug in. So what does it take to become an expert? You know, there's a lot of variability in that and uh, Matt Morris, I'll deviate from his script. He said, you know what? Most people don't know much about anything. He says, if you read five books on any topic, you would probably know more than 99%. And that was enough for him to consider you uh, as an expert. Um, but I like this quote, right? If you want to be part of the 1%, the experts, you can't live like the other 99%. And reading is absolutely the key. So let's look at Warren Buffett. Literally, this guy still reads 500 pages every single day. 
Uh, now he's been doing that for, who knows, 65 years. So as he said, knowledge builds like compound interest. Now, there's been very few days, I consider myself a voracious reader, there's been very few days that I've read 500 pages, but there's not many days, many days at all in the past four decades that I haven't read at least five pages. So do five pages compound? Well, I promise you they do. As long as you read things that are relevant uh, and you act on them, you apply them, you learn from them. I remember listening to one of my mentors way back when, and he said, Bob, I can cut your reading time and it down and your efficiency way up. And I said, I'm all ears. How, how do we do that? He said, don't read anything that doesn't relate to your primary mission in life. So think about that for a moment. Uh, you know, if you occasionally want to read for pleasure, that doesn't count as your reading, but every single day read to move your primary mission forward. So this was a question that was asked on uh, Qora, and it asked, you know, how do you get to be an expert? And they said, look, if you read three books on any topic, you should be above average on that topic. Uh, they said, if you read 100 books, and I promise you there's at least 100 books on network marketing. And one of my claims to fame is I've read at least 150 books. Why? The subject fascinates me. Uh, and I promise you it's really paid off. But it said 100 books should cover all important information. And I would agree with that. The first 100 books did that. What the next 50 plus do? Well, it just slightly refined my perspective. But I promise you there's been something in every one of those books that I could either use as a great example or occasionally as a bad example. And by the way, both of those serve. But Kiora said 50 books and you ought to be an expert. So why don't we start your reading list? We'll keep it at five because as Buffett said, simple's always worked for him. And here are my top five books on network marketing. So I really like Art Williams, How to Beat Talent, Brains, and Education. And by the way, that's actually an audio book. And here's a guy that became a billionaire uh, in network marketing. He had a very big why. Uh, and in fact, his father had died suddenly. And basically, his mother and father had purchased a very uh, ineffective life insurance plan. And he realized they could have gotten 10 plan, 10 amount, 10 times the benefit for the same dollar, but that no insurance company sold that because it wasn't profitable. So he went on on a mission to give people the best value for their dollar and to protect families. And he did that very, very well. Um, GoPro, Eric Worre, the number one skills book. We'll talk a little bit more about skills later. The Four-Year Career by Richard Bliss Brook. It's been newly uh, rewritten. Uh, I read the first one, I read the second one. It's amazing how similar yet different they are. His story has evolved. Uh, he's a master of what I call authentic networking. Uh, he did a special call for our team. And I, I asked him, I said, Richard, you know, you're a big fan of authentic networking. Was there a time that you were ever inauthentic? And he embarrassingly laughed. He said, Bob, my first decade was inauthentic. I was selling people on flash and glitz and glamor. Uh, and he says, you know what? One, I think that gives our profession a, a bad black eye if, we, if people think they're gonna get rich fast. But he says, realistically, most people want an extra $500 a month. You know, and, and how do you get to earn $100,000? You help enough people earn an extra $500 a month. So be authentic, make a great connection. Uh, John Milton Fogg, the greatest networker in the world. It's a great story. In fact, he was a struggling networker. And guess what? He reached out to Richard Bliss Brook and Richard said, look, John, you, you have all that it takes. We just need to, you know, tone down your approach a little bit, get you more authentic, get you helping people. Uh, and he became a multimillionaire. And then Chris Estes with the Apple principle, by the way, the A is attitude, super, super, super important. Um, and he, that, I listened to that one on audio because he has such a great voice and he's a great storyteller and he's got a simple daily method of operation. But here's your challenge. If you're up for a challenge, 
read and teach one chapter per week from these books. Just read and teach. And if you're an overachiever, go for two. Uh, by the time you finish those five books, I think you're going to have a really good start on what it takes to be an excellent networker. And then I, I decided to Google the top 1%. And what I found was pretty fascinating is it's a rotating top of the mountain. 11% of people get to the top, but only about 1% stay there for 10 years or more. So what we'd like to create is sustained success. And you wanna build your business on solid ground. And I promise you the principles that we're gonna share here are very, very solid. So John Maxwell, I've seen him in person multiple times. Uh, and basically he says the secret to your success is determined by what you do every single day. So you want a doable, DMO. DMO is daily method of operation. Make it doable. So how about early in the day, whatever that time is for you, you start with a delicious organo product. Now, you know, uh, it, it could be a cup of coffee. It could be a tea. It could be a cleanser for your face. Who knows, maybe you get on your Travala website and you get a deal or maybe you, you look for your family's next vacation. And uh, quick announcement here, we've got a brain line coming uh, and there's a beautiful way to start your day taking only six minutes, proven, proven to enhance your brain function. So be ready for that. That's coming and I'm gonna encourage you to take advantage of that. Next, you want to get one reply per day. So now that we uh, you know, have less personal contact because of a few changes in the world, why not send a text or a Facebook message? Send a nice greeting. You know, my classic is happy, beautiful day. And really it's evolved to happy, 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 beautiful, amazing day. But you might want to be briefer than that. Do you have a few minutes to connect today? Do you have five minutes? Whatever you need. And then just connect with someone. I'm going to suggest when you do, the first thing you want to know is, how are you doing? Are you okay? Can I add value to your world in any way? And your only agenda should be to add value to them. Uh, we'll find out later that all business is a conversation. We just want to keep the conversation going. What else do we do every day? We invest in ourselves. Energy and skills win. So you want to get energy. I was at a uh, elite conference, well, I think it was about a decade ago. And there was an eight time world champion that was the keynote speaker. Uh, and this guy had energy for 10 people. And, and someone asked him, they said, my gosh, how do you get so much energy? And he said, you know what? The only way to, to get energy is to earn energy. So I, I tell people that a great day starts with a great night before. Get a great night sleep. Nourish your body, mind, and spirit on awakening. Whatever that means to you. Uh, successful people have a morning routine. Uh, and then invest in the skills. Skills will pay the bills. And where do I think you get the skills? GoPro, the book, the conference. Plug into Eric Worre. Uh, he is a great trainer, and uh, a lot of what I've learned certainly has come from him, as it has in many top leaders. So when you start thinking about success, I love the definition that success is hunger times skills, but I like this quote from a guy named Sadhguru, another great thinker, great mentor. He says, if you're hungry, then you have one problem. If your belly is full, you have a thousand problems. So one of the keys is you want to stay hungry. So there's our hunger time skills. What are our seven skills? Finding prospects, inviting, presenting, following up, transferring beliefs, starting strong and promoting events. So let's share a few tips from that. Prospecting 101, find a way to add value. John, I'm just checking in on you. How are you? Can I do anything for you? Sally, it's been a while. How are you? Uh, what's going on in your world and let that conversation just go. And if you can add value, add value. 
I promise you, it is a law. You will reap what you sow, but not always where you sow. Now, what about the invitation? Uh, Eric Worre's conference, this was probably five years ago. He had the, everybody in the audience send out as many texts as they could uh, in 20 minutes. And the text was coffee question mark. That's actually what he suggested sending, coffee question mark. Well, uh, of the people that he polled in the audience, which was a bunch of them, the average person received eight positive replies from 20 minutes worth of texting. Now, I want you to think about that. And that was same day, same follow-up. Coffee question mark. Uh, what was the typical answer? Sure. When, where, you know? Um, and it, you want to make it even more appealing. Coffee question mark. I'm buying exclamation point. Uh, that may well go in your direction. By the way, you, we used to give away samples. Now we have people that are making a fortune selling samples, selling seven-day challenges. That might be the evolution of the business. When people pay, they pay attention. What about the presentation? So I took a presentation course, Pete Vargas. He said the network marketing industry is plagued by people being cheesy, people being cocky, and people being flashy but I like three C's, so I called it cashy. Um, don't be those things, right? Be authentic, be of service. As one of my mentors said, be of service and you will always have someone to serve. So Pete Vargas has trained Tony Robbins. He's trained Grant Cardone. He's trained Eric and Marina Wari. He's trained a lot of A-listers and he has trained them to be better presenters. And here is his simple format. You start with a heart-to-heart -heart connection. Then you lead with a little bit of heady information, maybe some facts, maybe some science. Then you give a call to action and then you finish back at the heart. He has a lot of reasons not to finish with the call of action because if you wrap up with that, people are going, okay, now comes the sales pitch. Right? So we'll go back to my story for a second. So I, I had a, a scare. You know, I thought I might have a short time to live. So I really started thinking, what am I going to do if I die? Well, I started looking at this business model. I, I really wasn't a fan of the business model, but I came to realize it was, you know, over 70 years old, available in over 200 countries, that it seemed to be the best business model for risk reward. And that's nice, not for me. That's from world leading economists, opinion leaders. The business is legit. And then we got a legit product with a patented competitive advantage where people really just need to try it and see what it does for them. No risk, just try it, see what it does. And enough of them love it that we build a business. So if you wanna get better, if you wanna be around a group of people making the world better, it might be a good idea for you to join us as we are purposely unordinary and we are making the world better and we are building a better model and then I finish with my heart story about how my life has positively changed as a result of that. And I've made friends all over the world. I, I like sevens and these are my, and, or mine and Kelly's magnificent seven leaders. People that are adding value to people every single day. People who are authentic. People who are sharing treasures. People who are making their dreams come true by helping others to make their dreams come true. What could be more beautiful than that? So skill four is the follow-up. All business is a conversation, stay in rapport and keep the conversation going. Well, what about skills five, six, and seven? You've got to ultimately transfer belief. You've got to get people started strong and you've got to promote events. And, but we've covered those as part of essentially our daily method of operation. How do you transfer belief? You just believe bigger than everyone and you be living proof of what we have going. And I promise you, that's the best way to transfer belief. So what's number five, according to Matt Morris? He says, stop looking for a leader and become one. I'll go to John Maxwell. Many consider him the ultimate leader today in business and leadership. But a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, shows the way. You've got to do all the above. Lead by example. You be the one that works. Uh, I've listened to an audio book by Robin Sharma uh, called The 5 a.m. Club. 
And you know, he talks about your first hour of the day having four things that you do. You work on your health set, your mindset, your heart set, and your soul set. Since I like sevens, so I'm gonna add skill set, belief set, and work set. And I promise you that all of these great leaders did that. So what's a simple summary of mindset? Stay hungry. How do you stay hungry? You hang out with hungry people. You run with the big dogs. Heart set, love is the answer. It's just that simple. Whatever the problem is, love is the answer. Uh, if you're not agreeing with someone about policies, love them anyways. You know, if someone's having a bad day, they really need some love. Soul set, I've been listening by, uh, or sorry, reading an audio, reading a book and listening to an audio by Tom Morris, PhD. Uh, I affectionately call him PhD. He's got a PhD in philosophy and religion. He said, I want to know what man thought and what God thought. But he said, you know what? The people that are the most spiritual are those that are the most centered, those that are the most unrattleable. So imagine you just having so much peace that it really doesn't matter what's going on around you. You're good. You're at peace. You're calm. You're certain. Uh, and, and I promise you that is very, very attractive. That's a lot more attractive than someone who's feeling chaotic all of the time. Health set, we're selling health. You want to be a product of the product. Uh, you know, you want people to say, I want your program. I want your skin. I want your energy. I want your body composition. I want your financial freedom. I want your travel ability. I want your cognition skills, which are coming. We're taking that one up to a whole new level. Skill set, success equals hunger times skills. You've got to have those seven skills. What's the baseline skill? Uh, they say inviting is, right? But you got to have someone to invite. So you prospect. How do you prospect? Make yourself attractive. How are you attractive? Add value to people. Find a way to add value. And then once you add value, the law of reciprocity takes over. You've done something for someone, they will want to do something for you or help you achieve your goal in some way. Belief set, uh, uh, that's one thing that I really like about the updated chairman calls. Paul Caldwell and I have a, a, a conversation nearly every week and sometimes more often than that. And I remember chatting with him. I said, Paul, every time I have a conversation with you, my belief goes up. Every time I see where you're taking this company, I see the verticals that you're creating. I see how you're changing payment remission. I see how you're changing cognition. I see how you're expanding the globe. I see how you're making investments. I see how you are in this for the long haul where everybody wins, we should share that with the world because I promise you it's been wonderful for me and I share it with the team. And Paul said, you know what? Easy enough. Let's do the chairman call. And you want to plug into those consistently because I promise you, if you get a hold of this vision, if you know where we're going, you're going to want to be there and you're going to want every single friend, everybody you care about to join us on this beautiful ride. And then finally, there's the work set. You've got to work. Consistency carves canyons. I'll give a big shout out to my friend Sachin Patel on that one. Great thinker, great speaker, great leader. Uh, you know, consistency wins. Whatever you do, do it consistently and consistently strive to get better. A little spiritual quote that I like, and, and by the way, I have many spiritual mentors. Uh, I believe we all come from one source, uh, and, and you may or may not believe that, but uh, then if we're from one source, we're essentially brothers and sisters, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? Uh, but when you think everything is someone else's fault, you will suffer a lot. When you realize that everything springs only from yourself, you will learn both peace and joy. And some people are saying, come on, this didn't all spring from me. Well, there's other people in the game too. But in your immediate surroundings and how you perceive the world and how you add value to the world and how it comes back, that's on you. Number six, expand your vision. So I love pictures like this. What can we be? Well, I promise you, we are just a fraction of what we could be. And that even includes the very best of us. I've seen people excel in many areas of life and they will all tell you, you know what? I'm just getting started. 
I'm just learning. I'm just finding my way. So what do humans crave? Well, they want something that is satisfying in terms of satisfying work. Now, I promise you, whatever work you're doing, you can make it satisfying. Uh, they want the experience of being good at something. Hey, being a good networker is a very highly paid skill. Being a good leader is a highly paid skill. Being a leader that builds leaders, now that's a mega skill. Being a master promoter, that's a mega skill. We wanna spend time with people that we like. Hey, you choose your business partners. It's easy enough. You know, it, it, is every person I've ever met, is that someone I want in my business? Well, quite frankly, not really, right? But my Magnificent Seven, oh my gosh, I love them. Every part of them, they're amazing, beautiful contributors. And not just them, right? But many, many, many thousands throughout the organization that I've had an opportunity to connect with. And then the chance to be a part of something bigger. We're changing the way this was done. We are creating a new ecosystem. This is not going to be, uh, uh, you know, something that's limited or frowned upon. What we are creating is going to be an icon. People around the world are going to say, wow, I want to be a part of that. We just need to, to lead the way on that. And number seven, extreme ownership. I like Jocko Willink. Uh, I just listened to an audio from him this morning. He was the ground commander at Fallujah, Iraq, uh, a beastie Navy SEAL. And he says, you've just got to own it. And I like this quote. He says, the most fundamental and important truths at the heart of extreme ownership, there are no bad teams. There are only bad leaders. So I've, I've actually heard people say, well, my team is lazy. I, I, you know what, please don't say that. Um, you know, you might say, I haven't found a way to inspire my team. That might be more true. That would be more along extreme ownership. But, you know, most of us, we, we, we like our relaxation time. But if we can tie into a purpose, something bigger than us, something that we know is very, very rewarding, we'll go and work for it. And his billboard in life, discipline equals freedom. And by the way, he took that one from Aristotle. So that's wisdom, which is thousands of years old. Jerry Seinfeld, you know, uh, maybe the richest comedian to date. He had a little plan. He wrote a joke a day. He had the discipline to write a joke a day. What was his first joke? I don't know. I never heard that one. Or maybe his second or his third or his 10th. Where did I start listening to him? I don't know, 5,000 jokes, something like that. I had many, many, many jokes. He kept the perfect attendance going. And, you know, you do something once, eh, maybe you're not so good. You do something 10 times, you're better. 100 times, better. 1,000 times, you better be better. And that's the same with your invitations. And that's the same with your, present, with your presentations. And that's the same with your prospecting. And that's the same thing with your daily disciplines. It all compounds. So how do we wrap this up? You should dream big. You should become an expert. This is what Matt Morris says. Uh, big dreams are motivating. Expertise draws experts to you or certainly people that want to be a part of it. You want to work the doable plan. You want to have hunger and skills. You want to lead by example. You want to expand your vision. It's been said that the greater the vision of the leader, the easier it is to attract winners. And then you want to take extreme ownership of all that you do. So that will wrap up this monologue of a conversation on success. Uh, it's been a beautiful independent weekend. I know that you know a lot of people that want to create their own declaration of independence. And by the way, one thing I'll share with you, you know, we actually can say that we have a healthier option when it comes to coffee, when it comes to skincare. Uh, even though we have a world where we can't make health claims, we can say that it's healthier. So let me ask you a question. Do you know anybody that's really craving something uh, or at least craving being a little healthier? I promise you, I know a lot of people that need it and it's our duty to reach out to them. So let's wrap it up for now. I like, I like to finish with this simple statement. I'm Dr. Bob Burkowski, absolutely knowing that we can all be happy, healthy, and successful. So good night and God bless.